night I hear these voices in my head asking me why I never made the video. Okay, so why did you not make this video? Well, I tried making it. I put in hours of research and turns out Sumeru architecture just doesn't exist in real life. I got a bad feeling about this. So you see, unlike Mondstadt or Inazuma, Sumeru architecture does not really represent any specific real-life culture, but it utilizes elements that are widely associated with certain cultures to create a gimmick, a fairy tale version of the Middle East. These cultures that Hoeverse was inspired by are much better represented by toponyms, characters, food and other items, but we can still point out traces of them in different elements of the game's design. Just like the Traveler, we will start from the eastern part of Sumeru rainforests and make our way through the region, learning about its architectural subcultures. For convenience, I came up with these names for each of the styles I wanted to talk about today, and I will leave a timestamp for each of them in the description. Thank you for joining me, please support this video with a like, and let's start! When we enter Gandharvaville, we are welcomed by a very unusual house, made from natural materials, this reinforced hut is very similar to the hanging tree houses of the settlement. Although hanging houses like these are pure fantasy and do not exist in real life, the main house of the village has a feature that became a staple in the architecture of Sumeru, the saddle roof. As we further progress to Vimara village, we notice no matter big or small, every house has a saddle roof. I looked for different real-life architectural styles that could have inspired these buildings, and in my opinion, the best guess would be this style of traditional architecture of North Sumatra in Indonesia. Not only the roof itself, but general shape of the building, natural construction materials, the decorated space right under the roof's curve, I believe the base of our so-called rainforest architecture is inspired by Batak style. And just as traditional houses in Indonesia evolved into much more complicated buildings that use similar elements, the architecture of rainforest villages starts its evolution. First, from a woven leaf screen turning into a wooden door, one saddle roof turning into a combination of two. Then primitive materials are being replaced by processed ones, and once we reach Sumeris city is the shape of the building that is becoming progressively more intricate, introducing what we would call the city architecture. Aside from Sumeru city, this architectural style can be found in Port Ormos, Caravan Ribad, the gardens around the region and the academia. Although the academia's buildings share a lot of similarities with the others in the city, they have one major difference – the choice of colors and materials. Most structures in the eastern part of Sumeru have green, brown and ivory details. In the academia, the main colors become blue, golden and white. The contrast between the green and the blue is very important in Sumeru's design, where green is associated with forests, dendro element, people of Sumeru and Nehida herself, and blue is the color of control and structure that is the academia. Noticeably, the more power the person holds within the academia, the cleaner shade of blue they wear. Now let's talk about the real-life cultural details used in Sumeru City's architecture. It utilizes a lot of pointed arches, onion domes, pinnacles, lotus-shaped roofs, lantern towers similar to minarets, jolly screens, the absence of figurative images and instead the variety of geometrical patterns and flower designs. It uses light and water to shape the atmosphere both indoors and outdoors. The influence of Indo-Islamic architecture is hard to doubt, specifically Mughal architecture that was derived from early Indo-Islamic architecture, the architecture of Islamic Persia and Central Asia, and indigenous Hindu architecture. However, certain small details come from other architectural styles, for example quatrefoil pattern of stained glass that is more common in Europe the modernist glass pavilion of Pardis Di, hints of Art Nouveau in doors, windows and furniture designs. Although generally inspired by Indo-Islamic architecture, the towns of Sumeru lack urban planning and look more chaotic, like petals of a flower. Persian concept of paradise garden that most likely inspired Pardis Di and Alcazar Sarai isn't really implemented in their designs, since they lack symmetry. 
an important part of this style of gardens, but they do use ponds, canals and beautiful rare flowers. Only the name was left from Grand Bazaar as a cultural reference, since in the game it's just a few stalls by the tree's roots. And Caravan Rebot, obviously inspired by Caravan Sarai's, has little similarities to its real-life prototypes, but successfully serves the same purpose – supporting travelers and commercial caravans on their ways between the rainforests and the desert. There are three distinct cultures we can find in Sumeru's desert – our village and abandoned Dar al Shifa, the old civilization of King Tushred and the nomadic Eremites. When talking about the modern desert architecture, we need to mention Berber people who are indigenous ethnicities of North Africa prior to the arrival of Arabs. Similarly, first settlers of Aru village came there from Deshred city of Aktamun. Aru village is a Ksar or a fortified village. It consists of several houses with flat roofs and a collective granary called Agadir. Although its architecture has some fantasy additions, after all, it is a video game, our village is a great representation of Berber architecture of Morocco, and its interiors also seem to be a tribute to this real-life culture. You may think, duh, the architecture of the Shred Kingdom is just ancient Egypt, and you would be so wrong. I get it, there is Anubis and all his friends, obelisks, the colors of the columns, even the toponyms suggest what the region was inspired by. However, the architecture itself looks more alien than Egyptian. I propose that the closest architectural style we can match except for fantastical designs would be Art Deco. Bold geometric forms, symmetry, luxurious materials, inspiration from ancient cultures, and, importantly, the embodiment of a new technological era that was the dream of King Deshred. His dreams, however, now lie in ruins, and only the tents of Eremites remind in shape of his past glory. The Eremites might have been inspired by Bedouins, historically nomadic Arab people, known for their unique societal structure, traditional tents and camel riding. Like Bedouins, Eremites also have many distinguished tribes and their unique Tents are architectural structures of a shelter type. Lastly, let's look at the houses of Aranara, because this video would not be complete without covering every type of buildings in Sumeru. Masters of sustainability, they managed to create these biophilic designs and take the lead in green architectural movement of the region. Seriously, they just live in gigantic radishes.